Hey everybody, welcome to the first installment in my second video series, Four Crucial Tools That Can Help Give Your Shakespeare Text Some Clarity. I'm Kyle Downing, I'm a Shakespeare coach here in New York City, and the subject of today's video is postulates. A postulate is an if-then statement that directly relates one thought, fact, or opinion with another. Postulates aren't exclusive to Shakespeare. In fact, they can be found pretty much anywhere, but they're a great tool to help us make sense of long blocks of text. Here's how to take advantage of postulates. Whenever you see the magic word if, connect it with the clause that follows. This is the if clause, or the hypothetical. After that, locate the corresponding then clause, or corollary. I'll show you what I mean. Take a look at this quote from Henry VI, Part 2. The line starts with an if. So, let's combine it with the clause that follows. If York have ill-demeaned himself in France, is the hypothetical. Now, let's find the corresponding then clause. Lucky for us, it begins on the next line. Then let him be denied the regentship. That's our corollary. Now we can see the two related thoughts and how they work together to reveal something about the character's point of view. When you see that word if, you'll be able to find a hypothetical and a nearby corollary 99% of the time. It's really simple. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's actually frustratingly complicated. Let's take a look at some more examples. Sometimes postulates are interrupted by tangent thoughts or parenthetical phrases, which we'll talk more about in my next video. Check out this line from All's Well That Ends Well. Let's find the if and combine it with the text that follows. We can simplify things a bit by ignoring the tangent thoughts and isolating the basic hypothetical. Now let's do the same with the corollary. Ignore the tangent thought and we have the basic corollary. Breaking it down in this way makes it easier to track Helena's thought process. Make sense? Good, because it's about to get a bit trickier. More often than not, you won't actually see the word then. Instead, it'll be implied somewhere in the text, which can make finding the corollary a bit tougher. This famous quote from Twelfth Night is a great example of an invisible then. Sometimes, the corollary comes before the hypothetical, like it does in this quote from The Merry Wives of Windsor. This doesn't change the way we interpret the postulate, it's simply reversed. And occasionally, the corollary will be interrogative, making the postulate a question. This is an example from The Tempest. Well, yeah, that's pretty cool, I guess, but what's the point? Well, in a giant, messy, complicated string of Shakespearean thoughts, the basic signs of a postulate are pretty easy to spot. And if you can then break it down to its basic elements in this way, you can get an idea of the character's thought skeleton and then layer all the other thoughts back up around it. I'll give you an example of what I mean. This is a famous quote from Macbeth. The whole thing is technically one sentence, and with all these commas and colons, the task of making this line work as an actor can seem a bit daunting. But when we isolate the basic hypothetical and corollary, the underlying train of thought becomes much more obvious. This run-on sentence from Coriolanus is actually a question, but it's nothing a little postulate work can't solve. Even when Shakespeare's mean enough to stuff five postulates into a small block of text, you can still use this technique to make sense of it easily. Taking advantage of postulates can make your table work a lot easier. But postulates don't just help us break down long thoughts. They can also be used to give us some insight into what a character is trying to accomplish. See, when a character uses a postulate, it's usually for one of five main reasons. The first is to establish or support a point of view. These postulates generally use the formula, if A is true, then B is true. These are two postulates that establish or support a point of view. To take a longer look, go ahead and pause the video. The second reason is to negotiate or threaten. These types of postulates usually follow the formula, if someone does A, someone will do B. Check out these two examples from Troilus and Cressida and King Henry VI, Part 1. The third reason is to explore a problem. The most common form for a postulate of this type is, if this, then what? Check out these quotes in which Claudio and Silvius are each exploring a problem. Reason number four is to advise or instruct. These postulates usually take the form, if this, then do this. Here, Bernardo gives instructions and Lady Anne gives advice. 
And the fifth and final reason is to examine a potential future scenario. The form for this type of postulate is generally, if this, then this will happen. These two quotes are great examples of characters who are looking into the future. Keep in mind that these aren't supposed to be treated as rules. They're simply a set of guidelines I've come up with to help give you some insight into a more refined objective for your character. Now, as always, there's something else I want to point out. Take a look. Remember this quote from Coriolanus? Well, there's a conditional phrase in here that's similar to a postulate. Where is it? And what other words are potential signs of conditional phrases? To find out more, send me an email, visit my website, or hit me up on social media. Here's how. Check this out. For more free tips, hints, and material suggestions from all 37 of Shakespeare's plays, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel by visiting my website, www.kyledowning.com Shakespeare, and clicking on the blue subscribe button at the top of the page. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Got a question? Tweet it at me, and I might just answer it in one of my future videos. And to book me for a private coaching session, send me an email to nyshakesguy at gmail.com or fill out the contact form on my website. Thanks for listening, and keep up the hard work on your bard work.